difference between I don't know how to like one of the people I'm going to be talking to is a professional domination. Yeah. What's kind of your take on people who who go to to a professional such as that versus what you do in your own personal life? Do you think that there is a big difference between those two things? Uh, well, yeah, um, I would have to say so. I, I don't see how professional dominatrix or uh, even could have the emotional attachment that we do to each other or we do to with our friends. Uh, it's business. I mean, I don't look down upon it because I personally I feel, you know, I would rather have somebody go to a professional that knows what they're doing if they, if that's the only way they can even participate in this lifestyle. Uh, the only thing I say about professional dominatrix is keep it to the BDSM and don't involve sex because a lot of these people that go to them are married and to me that would be unfaithful and dishonest and things like that and that that wouldn't be kosher. Uh, but if somebody emotionally has the need to be whipped or treated a certain way and they can't get it at home, I don't look at it as no different than going out and playing cards with the guys and just uh, blowing off some steam. Uh, personally, I couldn't do that when I was married. I had to be before I could get involved with other people, I had to be separated. It just wasn't my cup of tea, to because then that's that's crossing a line I didn't want to cross. One of the play party aspects is that usually a couples only thing, or do they involve? Oh, they can involve singles, but usually at a play party, uh, there's no sexual activity. You know, you're not allowed a, g a good play party. There's no sexual activity. You have somebody that's supervising everything to make sure nobody gets hurt. Only a certain number of people are allowed to play at one time. Uh, a play party is basically, a l and a lot of times, a lot demonstrations get given at play parties, uh, where somebody who has certain skills can show off their skills and teach other people. And in that aspect, they're real fantastic because if, some, if you've got somebody who's knowledgeable in one thing and he can show other people, that means the odds of somebody else getting hurt down the line is a lot slimmer. Which is one of the things that's going to confuse people. It's like saying, okay, we're going to put somebody naked on a, uh, you know, chain them up, and we're going to do something to them. That sounds embarrassing and humiliating, and it sounds like it's, it's cheating and all this other kind of stuff, which goes against what society does. But in the long run, a lot of people learn more from that than they ever will off the internet than they ever could on their own. So it does have a place and it does have a purpose. It's not cheating, it's not sexual. It, this is purely just the, this is the mechanic. Play parties are mechanical, not emotional, not sexual, but they are a mechanical place. One of the things you were talking about is the explosion of the internet. What do you think the internet has done? Do you think that it's Brought good things, bad things, you think? Mix. I have to say a mix. I mean, it has brought a lot of new people that belong in this lifestyle along with people that want to use this for their own benefit, want to use it, or, or the wannabes, the people that pre think they are dominant or submissive, people that want to play games, people that don't really, they just want to take the, just to grab the kinkiness of it, or just to even come right out and abuse people. So it's, the, it's, the, it's done both. Which was part of the thing that I was trying to see how you would react to the, to the professional end, uh -huh. because I was talking in terms of um, a lot of the image that people have would be obviously through pornography or, yeah. or stuff like that. Does that in some way? Um, do you believe that the people that, that gravitate towards that end are more in the line of people that want to, that are the abuser type, or is there an, 
emotional connection that people can have to stuff like that? Well, no, you see, now, like a dominatrix, the one, because I know a couple of them that uh, they're not abusers. They do this, and some of them aren't even in the lifestyle. They just know how to do this. They know how to top, and that's a different phrase rather than dominate somebody. Uh, they're playing a part. Um, they're fulfilling a need for, for, they're not abusing somebody. They do it just, they do it for the money. They do it for, but they, a lot of them, the ones I know, really don't get a whole lot of enjoyment out of it. It's an income. Is that necessarily a bad thing? Or nah. No, nah, it's my thoughts, because the ones I know, there's no sex involved in it whatsoever. And I, I don't really feel that there's, I feel there wouldn't be a need for them if people were more open to this lifestyle. But, I mean, how many other ways can somebody have certain emotional and physical needs fulfilled without, without the emotional attachment? They don't have to worry, I mean, if you just, if, if you avoid the sex, you don't worry about STDs. You don't, you don't worry about having somebody stalking you. You don't have to worry about uh, somebody coming to your front door and saying, hey, guess what, I'm pregnant or whatever. It's, I, if more people were receptive to this lifestyle and realized that certain people do enjoy this, they wouldn't have to go anywhere. They could be at home and have some, because you really can't take a flogger to yourself. It's really kind of hard. You know, you pretty much got to have somebody else work it.